The camera shake effect in DaVinci Resolve is a super easy way to add new life to your locked off shots. It's also a really easy way to create a camera shake transition really, really easily. So I've got a couple clips lined up in DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna go through the entire camera shake effect. I'm gonna show you all of the settings that are available to you and we're gonna use those settings to create a camera shake effect. But before we do any of that, I wanna give a huge thanks to the sponsor of today's video, MixKit. MixKit is a one-stop shop for high quality stock footage, music, and effects templates that you can use in both your personal and commercial projects. In fact, the footage that we're working with today is from their website. And the best part about it, it's completely free. That's right, you heard me correctly. 100% free stock footage, music, and templates for Premiere Pro, After Effects, and even DaVinci Resolve that you can use in personal and commercial projects. That's like unheard of. MixKit is brought to you by the people over at Envato who have a long track record of providing high quality assets for your video. So if that sounds like something you could use, make sure you click the link in the description and check out MixKit today. All right, let's take a look at this footage in DaVinci Resolve. It's just a couple clips of some people dancing. You can see we're dancing here, but you can notice there's absolutely no movement whatsoever as far as the camera is concerned. It's just, it's just locked off on a tripod. Same thing with this one right here. There's just no movement except for like when the guy bumped the camera or something. But other than that, there's no movement. I don't like that. We're gonna change that. We're gonna add some camera shake, some camera movement, make it look like a more handheld shot. So first thing we're gonna do is come over to the effects library. We're gonna come in to our search bar. We're gonna type in camera. And that is a camera shake transition. We don't want that. So actually we need to come down to open effects. There we go. There's our camera shake transform. Let's go ahead and drag that onto our first clip. And then we're gonna come over into our inspector. Let's go ahead and select our clip, come over into our inspector. Let's go into effects. And here's all the settings for the camera shake. And you can see we've got a lot of settings to go over here. So we've got motion scale. So let's go ahead and drop this down to zero. Go ahead and play this back. Oh, there we go. Go ahead and play this back. You see there's still no motion. If we bring that halfway up, now you can see we've got some motion going on. And then if we bring it up more, the motion is really, really exaggerated. Go ahead and reset that to default. Now we've got speed scale. So if we drop that all the way down, we've got really slow, very, very subtle motion going on. You may not even be able to see it there. It is there, but it's very, very subtle. And then if we come up a little bit, we've got more and then again, there you go. Let's go ahead and reset that and take a look at motion blur. So if we come back to the beginning of our timeline, we start playing. We've got no motion blur here, but as we drag it up, we have now added motion blur to our camera movements. Reset that. And these are all kind of the global settings here. So this is the overall motion, the overall speed. And if we come down here, we can look at uh, pan, tilt, rotation, pan, tilt, rotation, speed, zoom amplitude, zoom speed, zoom type. We've got a whole bunch of stuff here. So if we do pan amplitude, let's go ahead and just bring everything down to zero right now. We'll bring PTR speed up just so you can see what's going on. But you'll see if I play this right now, we've got no movement here because everything is down at zero. Now let's crank pan amplitude all the way up and you can see that we're rocking back and forth. If I do tilt, we'll bring pan back down. If I do tilt, we're moving up and down. Let's bring tilt all the way down and I bring rotation all the way up. Rotation deals with the rotation and bring that down. And then we've got zoom amplitude and zoom speed. So if I bring this all the way up, you're not really seeing much here because the speed is all the way down. But if I bring the speed all the way up, 
and play. We're just zooming out and in really, really fast. That is, I'm gonna give myself a seizure. And then zoom type, you can do outward only, inward only, or outward and inward. So let's bring the zoom speed down a little bit and see if we can see the difference here. So this is outward zoom. This is inward zoom and then outward and inward is making me dizzy. And then below all those settings, we've got our shake quality where you can deal with the type of motion you have. So right now we're on sign. Whoop. And then we've got rectified sign. Rectified sign invert. And square wave. I personally keep this on sign because it's just a little more natural and a little more fluid. So that's just my two cents. Below that, we've got phase. Let's go ahead and bring that down and we're gonna play. And we'll bring phase up a little bit more. Not quite sure what that does. There definitely is a difference there. And phase again. And then the randomness scale, you can bring it down and it's gonna be a more fluid or more uniform motion. And then if we bring it all the way up, you just can't really predict where it's gonna go next. Randomness speed, we can bring that down. Again, it slows everything down, but you still can't really tell where it's gonna go next. Then you bring it up again and it just becomes a jittery mess. Let's go ahead and reset that, reset that, and reset that. And then pause length and pause interval is just how long does it pause between each different camera movement. Below that is pause randomness, which basically says when it's gonna pause. Is it gonna be kind of at a set interval? Is it gonna be random? You get the idea. And then random seed, I'm not 100% sure what that does, to be honest. If you do, let me know in the comments. And then the last two settings I wanna show you is border type and zoom to crop. And these are there because sometimes when the camera is moving around, especially if you're doing more extreme motions, you can start to see the corners of the video and you'll get black borders. We don't like that. So what I personally like to do is change the border type to reflect. And then if I come over to pan amplitude and just bring that all the way up and we play this, you'll see you don't end up seeing the edges of the screen. The other thing you could do is do zoom to crop. So if you bring that up, it'll zoom in on the video, but it'll make it so those black borders aren't really gonna be seen. I don't like doing the zoom if I don't have to. I would much prefer to control everything using a reflect border type. So once again, let's just reset everything. And actually the way that this video is and the way that it's playing, I kind of like it. It it fits the mood, it, it works. I actually, yeah, I really like that. It's almost like the cameraman's kind of dancing with everybody else. I, I like that, we're gonna keep that and we're actually going to drag that same effect onto our second clip. So if we're playing here, That works. All right, let's create this transition. We wanna transition from this clip to this clip and we're gonna do a really cool camera shake transition. So let's put our playhead in between the clips. And what we're gonna do is come into our effects library. We're gonna clear our search bar, come into effects. We're gonna grab an adjustment clip and we're going to bring it down to our timeline. Next thing we're gonna do is back up six frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go ahead and trim that to the playhead. Bring it back to the middle. And we're gonna go seven frames this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're gonna go ahead and trim that back to the playhead. 
And just for good measure, let's select our adjustment clip. We're gonna put our playhead back in the middle. We're just gonna hit M to set a marker there. That way, if we're gonna move that transition and we're gonna put it somewhere else, we have a marker for the middle of the transition. All right, let's zoom in here. And we're gonna come back up to our search bar. Uh, first, we're gonna come to open effects. We're gonna come into our search bar. We're gonna search again for camera. Resolve FX Transform Camera Shake. Let's go ahead and drag that onto our adjustment clip. Now, the way that I want this to look is as the transition hits the middle, I want the shake to become a lot faster and a lot stronger. And I also want there to be more motion blur. And then when it comes back towards the end of the transition, all that stuff is going to die down. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come into our effects and we're gonna set our speed scale here at one at the first frame. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, really. So what we're gonna do is set that speed scale to zero at the first frame and our motion scale to zero and our motion blur scale to zero. And we're gonna set keyframes for all three of those. Then we're gonna come to the middle we're gonna bring our motion scale all the way up, our speed scale all the way up, and our motion blur scale all the way up. And then we're gonna to come to the end and we're gonna go back one frame and we're gonna bring our motion scale all the way down, our speed scale all the way down, and our motion blur all the way down. And now if we play that back, We're getting there, but I think we can do a little bit more. It's not quite dramatic enough. So what we're going to do is once again, come back to the beginning of our transition. And now we're gonna work in the shake levels and we're gonna work with the amplitude. So let's go ahead and bring our pan, tilt and rotation and PTR speed all the way down. We're gonna set keyframes on all four of those. Again, move into the middle, bring all that stuff up. And then again, to the end, move back one frame and bring it all the way down. And now if we play that back, there we go, that's looking good. One thing I wanna do, because you can see that if we go frame by frame, we actually do get some black bars here. Lots of black bars there and there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into our zoom to crop. Well, first we're gonna change our border type to reflect and see if that works out. Oh, that works out, we don't have to zoom, that's nice. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. Got some people dancing, including the cameraman, a nice camera shake transition. I like it. So like I said, camera shake, super easy to use. Kind of like the video collage effect I showed you a couple weeks ago. If you want to check that out, click here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.